I'm at ECC in Paris. Joining me here, we have Jerome, the CEO and founder of Comet. How are you today? I'm pretty good. <laughs> it's going so, so far so good at, at the conference? Yeah, it's an amazing edition again. Uh, we're really blessed to have this conference every year in Paris. Uh, well, it's been seven years now in a row. Very happy about how the, the, the overall turnout has been. Um, tremendous crowd, tremendous activity, uh, wonderful people meeting it all the time. And um, yeah, super happy to be here and super pumped about what's going on. Can you describe the crypto community in Paris and France and how it's evolving? Yeah, just like in um, any major uh, tech industry, we have a lot of uh, French engineers over different company. Um, and it really translated very well in France because we had a, a lot of good point of contact in the peer-to-peer -peer and open source community. So crypto like bloomed very well in, in France. Uh, now we have an ecosystem of uh, various really good startups that are super active in the space. And, um, and yeah, I know, and also big events coming up. So it's bringing people from all over the world to the city, making people realize that Paris is uh, actually a pretty big place in the crypto world. And people speak French here and there. I mean, even Vitalik speaks French, so yeah. we are we are French compatible. All right. And then what about in the gaming space, though? Would you say that Paris is a gaming hub? Oh yeah, it is. We have uh, well, we have Ubisoft and uh, a couple of other big players in the in the gaming space, also in the in the mobile space industry as well. Um, and when it comes to specifically Web3, we have a Sandbox, which is Mastodon. We have uh, we have Sorare, which is a pretty big one, and we have Scamuff, which is one of the only purely on-chain games. So uh, really retail-focused games with a large. Um, Spectrum and large, large, large reach like Sorare and, and Sandbox, but you have also us, which uh, is more tech-oriented and still uh, touching its niche. So, how would you differentiate yourself from other Web3 gaming studios? So, we have a, our strategy regarding the, the, the blockchain space that we we build games that resemble our value and how we like to apply blockchain to our games. So we are more on the innovative side and uh, in, in, in creating new experiences thanks to the blockchain. We, are, we like to put things a lot on the chain. Okay. Uh, doing so we uncover different problems that you may have building games. So we currently have two activities, the game studio that produces those indie games really fully on chain and doing cool stuff on chain thanks to that. Uh, and on the other side of the company, we distribute the deck that we uh, that we created and, uh, and 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 built for our own games. Um, so it's fun to see how the the Web two people that are interested into Web three are looking at the game makers are potential good people to talk to when they want to do something in Web3. Yeah. Uh, and today we have about 15 clients ranging from uh, Lacoste, a uh, brand company like Fashion, fashion, fashion. Uh, we have a Française des Jeux, FDJ, which is uh, the national lottery doing things with us and, um, and relying on our expertise and our endpoints to uh, build Web3 experiences that are relevant for the retail. Uh, and we continue to do, uh, to do innovative stuff with our game studio. Like, this is where we like to uh, sell Petri dish, let's say. So you said that you, do you do stuff beyond gaming or yeah. yeah? Okay, could you talk about a few of those initiatives? Yeah, absolutely. We have a we have a solution called Alembic uh, that does a lot of middlewares that are more targeted at applications that are looking for uh, a lot of throughput or retail adoption. Um, so, for example, we are at the, the forefront of innovations in terms of account abstraction. We have one of the only uh, full-fledged account abstraction solution on top of an SDK. Can you break that down oh, for what that means exactly in as simple terms as possible? <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, if you've ever, ever used a Web3 application, the first thing is connect your wallet. Oh, I don't have a wallet, so what should I do? Oh, install a wallet. Oh, okay. Uh, and then you get you get someone into a, a funnel of uh, hustling, you know, they yeah, need to install. Too many steps. It's, it's too many steps. And Web2 is two clicks. So with account abstraction, we, we reduced the number of clicks to three clicks. Like Web3 should be three clicks on morning. So the way we do it is that we we use different signers. Uh, there's a very uh, popular signers that's up and coming and really booming right now called WebOfn, using uh, the secure enclave of your phone to generate a key. Um, so we use that as a signer, so you don't have to install any wallet. You already have a key you can sign, a key that is hosting in your, it's hosted in your phone that you only control. You're able to sign messages and the account abstraction part is us taking these signed messages and pushing them on the blockchain, making them recognizable on the chain. So you are actually interacting with the chain without doing transactions. Right, right. So you're getting you an account. You don't realize that you're doing it. Yeah. Getting an account and then you are making transactions without ever having to interact with the chain itself. 
And when you look at it from, uh, take a step back and look at it from a Web2 perspective, when I end up on eBay, for example, I'm, yeah. I'm like, I'm creating an account, I'm giving my information, I'm Jerome, I'm, I'm, this is my email, and so on and so forth, right. and then I have a profile on eBay. Well, on the Web3, on the Web3 environment, we come to an application and we're like, oh, connect my wallet, so I'm bringing in my profile. Yeah. So the Web3 application literally don't have any profile, any CRM of their users and so on. So with account abstraction, you can take the, the account creation, classic account creation, but you can also give at the same time to your users a Web3 endpoint, a Web3 account that they can interact with. Got it. So it's a way to maybe standardize your digital profile in a way? Um, standardize the digital profile with the Web2 standards. Right. Yes, right. Make, it, make them really easy to access. Um, and also really close to the initial roots of Web3, that is being your own custodian, right. uh, being able to interact with the chain and ramp up uh, into a more uh, crypto savviness, let's say. Yeah. Ownership, decentralization, all those good things. Yeah. <laughs> we, we start. I mean, we started the, in the early days by saying to people, install a wallet. So, like, only the the hardcore were installing the wallet and are and, and thrive beyond that. Can I ask how many wallets you have? Uh, you mean how many people created an account an account for account abstraction with us? No, no. That like you personally. Like, how many wallets have you had to like sign up for? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I can uh, disclose this information on uh, okay. on on stage. Look, I, I've mainly five wallets that I use regularly. Okay. Five five addresses right. uh, externally owned that I use regularly. Okay. Yeah. I think that's like a normal amount. I also have the same. I... Yeah, and um, in a, in the account abstraction uh, view, uh, any application you interact with is going to deploy your contract for you. That will be your account, abstracted because right. they are paying for the gas. And the signer, the one, the key you use to sign, maybe one of your five key, or maybe something that's really easy to port and use on your phone and use somewhere else. So that's really levering super low the, the, the barrier to entry. Yeah, that's what we need more of. And now, taking it back to gaming, I know that you guys came out with a recent title that it will now be available on the Epic Game Store. So that's super exciting. Yes, Tell me is. a little bit more about that title and how that came to be, that partnership with Epic. Absolutely. So our first, uh, our first try at doing a blockchain game was in, uh, in early 2021. And we, we, we came with zero experience because there was nobody that was doing it back in the day. So after this first game, we tried to uh, learn from our mistake and learn from what went right and work on another game, which is a trading card game. So pretty classic in the, in the yeah. Web3 gaming industry. But also, it's, um, it's using a lot of the blockchain endpoint to create an immersive economy and an immersive interaction between the players, and also relying on the chain to create uh, different forms of gameplay and different forms of, uh, of tournaments between the players, different forms of challenges. We coded the game for about six months, like the core of the game, and then we started to add and sprinkle different Web3 innovations, like our account abstraction was first used in this game and first made a tested in this game. And then um, we spent 12 months playtesting it and balancing it, so the game is uh, fun to play and, uh, and competitive, uh, which is like usually what you want to achieve, like fun to play and competitive. Sometimes we can only get one or the other, and we think we managed to get the most. Okay. So now it's uh, fully remastered in Unity, like a good standard for for uh, for Web3 for, for for gaming design as a whole, and it was accepted as a um, as a Epic Games Store uh, approved game, including the account abstraction. So it's a really good sign that uh, now Web2 giants are embracing this kind of roots. Um, so we can't wait to be exposed to the hundreds of billion, millions of players that you find on Epic Games Store and prove them that Web3 gaming is not necessarily rug pulls and, uh, and bad NFTs collections with the owners, with the creators playing away and so on. And there is actually more that the blockchain can give to gameplay through the blockchain, through, 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 through the blockchain endpoint as a whole. I know, I'm always getting those comments as well, like, no, crypto's a scam, crypto's dead. So we need to show the rest of the world that there's still a lot of innovation going on. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for your time today, Jerome. Likewise, thank you for interviewing me.